Good evening, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. Malaysia's most high-profile prisoner, Najib Abdul Razak, aims to swap his prison cell for his posh pad in Kuala Lumpur, claiming a royal pardon abendum allows him to serve his sentence at home. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak claims there's an addendum to his recent royal pardon, allowing him to serve the rest of his six-year jail term at home. He filed a judicial review application at the Kuala Lumpur High Court on April 1st, asking authorities to confirm this addendum. Najib alleged it was issued by the Yang Dipertuan Agong on January 29th, halving his original 12-year sentence in the SRC International corruption case. He is seeking to be transferred from the Kajang prison to his Kuala Lumpur residence for house arrest. Najib also seeks the original addendum, costs and other relief. On top of that, Najib accused authorities of ignoring his inquiries and trying to hide the addendum. The court will address the matter tomorrow and Malay Sikini is contacting the Attorney General's chambers for a response. The Agong grants KK Mart founder Chai Ki Khan an audience where Chai tenders an apology for the sock scandal. Here's more on what happened during the brief royal meeting. The Yang Di Pertuan Agong granted an audience to KK Mart founder Chai Ki Khan today. During the 15-minute meeting, Chai tendered his apology to the monarch and the Muslim community regarding the sock scandal. In a statement following the audience, Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar emphasized the importance of responsibility and cautioned against further provocation of the public regarding the controversy. The king said it is imperative for all parties to exercise greater responsibility, prevent a recurrence of similar incidents, and this will be the final reminder. While refraining from naming specific individuals, the king's warning alludes to figures like Amno Youth Chief Dr. Muhammad Akmal Saleh, who has vigorously advocated for a boycott of KK Mart. The backlash against KK Mart has escalated to three firebombing attempts on the convenience store's outlets in Perak, Pahang and Sarawak. Additionally, the Yang Di Pertuan Agong stressed the need for heightened vigilance among all stakeholders, including KK Mart, regarding products they offer, particularly imported goods, to prevent similar controversies from arising in the future. UMNO heeds the Agong's advice and has directed its youth chief to halt agitation over the controversial sock scandal and the KK Mart boycott. UMNO Supreme Council has directed its youth chief, Dr. Muhammad Akmal Saleh, to seize the agitation concerning socks bearing the word Allah and the calls for a boycott of convenience store KK Mart. Supreme Council member Bung Mokhtaradin clarified that there was no room for debate regarding Akmal's actions. Bung said this is because the UMNO leadership had already made the decision to halt the issue. Quoted by Brita Haryan, Bung said this comes after UMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi's directive to drop the matter. Bung further explained that the President has communicated that Kikimat has no intentions to perpetuate the issue. Therefore, UMNO respects the decision to discontinue. Speaking at Sabah UMNO's Breaking Fast event with the media and orphans in Kota Kinabalu, Bung noted His Majesty the King has also urged all parties to refrain from exploiting the issue. Additionally, Bong expressed disappointment regarding accusations by former Patagas State Assembly person James Lee Gunjang, who called for the rejection of Amno in Sabah over the KK Mart issue. Spanko Tycoon has denied deception charges in a multi billion ringgit contract case. He then posted bail and surrendered his passport. Tycoon Robert Tan Hua Chun, head of Spanko Sindirian Berhad, has pleaded not guilty to charges of deceiving the finance ministry into awarding his company a lucrative 15-year contract exceeding 3 billion ringgit for government vehicle services. The 83-year-old stands accused of violating Section 420 of the Penal Code in February 2019 at the Finance Ministry in Putrajaya by allegedly providing false information to a ministry tender committee regarding Spanko's ownership structure. The charge alleges that Tan misled the ministry by falsely claiming Spanko had a 30% Bumiputra ownership stake, leading to the awarding of the contract. 
If convicted, Tan could face imprisonment ranging from 1 to 10 years in addition to a possible fine and whipping. Following discussions between the parties, Deputy Public Prosecutor Mahadi Jumaat revealed that both sides agreed to a 2 million ringgit bail, which was granted by Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court Judge Susanna Hussain. Additional bail conditions were imposed, including the surrender of Tan's passport, reporting to the nearest MACC office every two months, and prohibition from communicating with trial witnesses. Judge Susanna Hussein also set June 4th for the next case management date. Spanko, founded in 1988, holds the distinction of being Malaysia's leading independent fleet management provider, securing a 25-year concession agreement with the government in 1993. Former PM Ismail Sabri calls for mutual respect amid the Allah Sox controversy. He urges caution in religious matters following tensions and firebombing attempts at several KK Mart outlets. Former Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob said there needs to be mutual respect between Muslims and non-Muslims in the country. He said this was important as it could prevent incidents such as the Allah Sox controversy from happening again. In an interview with FMT, Ismail Sabri said that when it comes to religious matters, it's not just Islam, all religions should be respected. He said we can't demand that others respect us, must respect them too, and sometimes we need to put ourselves in the shoes of others. He added that if the controversial socks bore the image of a deity of other gods, non-Muslims would not have compromised either. Ismail Sabri said we need to thread carefully when it comes to religious matters. He also expressed hope that the government was keeping tabs on the issue to prevent copycat attacks in the future. The Sox controversy surrounding KK Mart has led to prolonged tensions among Malaysians. It has also led to firebombing attempts at three of its outlets, namely in Perak, Pahang and Sarawak. You know it's time for Raya when Alif Shukri releases his video. However, this year he managed to spark controversy even before he could upload the full video. Communications Minister Fami Fadzil has urged the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission to swiftly address concerns raised by the public regarding a video clip uploaded by cosmetics entrepreneur Alif Shukri. Speaking to reporters last night, Fami said he directed the MCMC to thoroughly investigate the matter and take appropriate measures. Saya telah tonton sebahagian daripada mana-mana video yang telah dimuat naik dalam media sosial dan uh, uh, saya telah minta uh, pihak MCMC untuk meneliti perkara ini dan uh, mengambil uh, sebarang tindakan yang bersesuaian. Tapi masih yang sama, uh, saya rasa ramai yang, yang mungkin uh, uh, mengambil maklumlah keputusan Alif Shukri, Dato' Alif Shukri untuk tidak memuat naik uh, video tersebut. Uh, so I think at this point in time, we leave it at that. Lah. On Sunday, Alif Shukri's teaser for his latest Idol Fitri song, Love Raya, drew criticism for its inappropriate content. Subsequently, in response to criticism from social media users, the cosmetics icon promptly removed the video and issued a formal apology. The government is on its way to separate the roles of the top legal advisor and the public prosecutor in a two-year phased process. Here's more on that. The process to separate the roles of the government's top legal advisor and the public prosecutor will be implemented in phases over two years. This is according to de facto law minister Azalina Othman Said. Azalina said this will be done through an empirical study in three countries, starting with Canada in May, then in Australia and the United Kingdom. She said the study covers several aspects, including institutional protection for the appointment and termination of the public prosecutor. She added that it will also look at accountability, especially the need to report to anybody as a check and balance mechanism. According to Azalina, the study had been approved by the Cabinet on January 31st and will be overseen by the Comparative Study Committee and a Technical Committee. Azalina said the committee comprises the chairperson of the Parliamentary Special Select Committee on Human Rights, Elections and Institutional Reforms, one representative each from the government and opposition MPs and representatives from agencies such as the Finance Ministry and Public Service Department. 
She said the Legal Affairs Division and the Attorney General's Chambers will jointly serve as the Secretariat for both committees. Last week, it was reported that the Parliamentary Select Committee on Human Rights, Election and Institutional Reform is reviewing the separation of powers between the two roles, which are presently held by a single person. The issue is a key demand by groups such as Bursay and the Malaysian Bar. Join our Muhiba Story Photo and Essay campaign. Share your cross-cultural friendships to celebrate Malaysia's diversity. Submit a photo with friends or family from different ethnic or religious backgrounds, along with a 100-word story to ourstoryatmalaysiakini.com by April 30th. Selected stories will be featured on Malaysia Kini and contributors will receive a free one-month subscription. Let's build a better Malaysia together. That is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.